A little over four years ago, we discovered what we now call the power curve. So the, the reason we called this thing a power curve was because it, it obeys a power law. And there's lots of power laws in nature. For example, the frequency of earthquakes follows a power law, funnily enough, the size of cities uh, and things like best-selling authors. So if JK Rowling, who wrote Harry Potter, walked into a bookseller's convention, uh, the average bookseller in that convention becomes a bestseller, even though in reality, they're still working on their manuscript at night. Uh, so it's, it's a situation where the averages can be very misleading because they're radically determined by the tail. And that's the case in the business world where we see companies like Amazon or Apple or Microsoft kind of really driving the economic profit outcomes of the, of the entire business world. This really intrigued us because what it said was 60% of companies are kind of stuck in the middle and working hard to make no economic profit, but the top 20% get this extraordinary amount of value. And that led to a few questions. The first one was, well, can you change your station? Can you change your lot in life? And the answer is yes, actually you can. There's a surprising amount of dy dynamism on the power curve. One in 12 companies actually do go from the middle to the top over a decade. But where it got really interesting was when we asked ourselves the question, could we pick which ones go up and which ones don't? Is there a way that some companies can seem to tilt those odds in their favor? Um, and that's where we developed the model of the endowment plus the trends plus the moves, these 10 variables that explained over 80% of whether a company would go up or not.